Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's video, which is about capacitors, inductors, reactants, and things like that, comes to us from a friend and fellow club member, Steve, KI0KY. He says, Dave, if the effect of capacitors and inductors varies with frequency, what is the frequency for the stated value of a capacitor or inductor? Either I misunderstand the concept or the explanations I have been given don't make sense. So let's take a look at resistors and capacitors. First of all, what do they look like? Well, a capacitor is two metal plates the wire and the wire okay so the plates have an area they have a distance apart and then there's something inside um, which has a dielectric constant okay which is sometimes given by this little Greek letter E and these are the things that affect the capacitance the capacitance of a capacitor is an intrinsic value in the capacitor itself and has to do with how much charge it can store. Now if you put current in here, the electrons are going to pile up on this side, which is going to pull electrons away from this side, and you get plus in there. And that will continue until you get up to the value of the voltage, like a battery that you put across this, or you can use it in a power supply or something. Okay, and that charge will stay there until it is discharged. Now this is a little bit different between capacitors and inductors, and I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so that's a capacitor. Let's take a look at a capacitor. Here is a variable capacitor, and you can see the plates and you can see as I turn this dial, these plates mesh, like right here, they're meshed all the way, so that's the maximum capacitance. And then you can come all the way out here to where they're fully unmeshed, that's the minimum capacitance. Capacitors used to be used a lot in this tuning uh, capacity right here because uh, well, it's just the way it's been done for years, but these are so expensive now, it's done differently. Now, this little thing down here, laying down right there where my finger is, if we can get some light on it, the round thing is an inductor. It's wound around a uh, dielectric material that is composed of iron filings uh, that have been glued together into a, a core like that. Those are called toroids. Or you can get an inductor like this, which is just wound wire. And inductors in this form are called solenoidal. Okay. When this has energy in it, when there's charge on this plate, there's a constant voltage on the battery and it is stored in the dielectric in something called an electric field and that's measured in volts per meter so you get the idea here that the capacitor is a function of the area the distance more distance makes it harder to fill it with an electric field so it's less capacity and the characteristics of the material that are inside the inside the capacitor okay now let's look at inductors inductors are coils now if there is current flowing then we'll call this an ammeter okay if there is current flowing this way it will create an electric field or I'm sorry 
if there is current flowing this way it will create a magnetic field and it will store energy in the magnetic field okay so this will create a magnetic field as long as there's current flowing when the current stops flowing the field collapses and when it collapses it will push charge out here push current out here in an attempt to keep the current going so inductors oppose a change in current just like capacitors oppose a change in voltage now let's take a look that that's all well and good at DC but let's take a look at what happens in the presence of AC if you've got a capacitor and here's the symbol for it it's just two plates okay and you try and push current this way it'll pile up on this side and create a deficit over here and it will come to a point of stasis on DC where no more current flows so if you have um, a capacitor and you're looking at the voltage the voltage will go up and reach a constant which will be the supply voltage okay and then if you take the supply voltage away it will try and keep the voltage constant by pushing current whereas the inductor will try to keep the current flowing by creating a high voltage okay the electrons pile up over here and the change in voltage goes down 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 as it gets fully charged but then if you've got AC like this you're charging it up then discharging it charging it up the other way and then discharging it charging it the other way and there will be a current going back and forth if you look at it instantaneously but it appears that the device allows some current to pass. Okay, now I'm going to confuse you a little bit because I'm going to say that the current, this will oppose, if you have DC across this, the circuit, it will assume the voltage of the DC supply and then nothing else passes that's why we say the capacitors block DC and pass AC well it doesn't pass at all as the frequency changes here as the frequency goes up it becomes easier to throw a few electrons here and then come grab them away real quickly like if you've got a megahertz type frequency or something here you're not in that period of time putting all that much charge on either side of the capacitor and it feels like it does not resist the current as much whereas if you have um, a low frequency it's got to pile up more electrons over here and it'll be a little bit harder to do it so we have a concept called reactants reactants means it reacts to the AC and for low frequency it reacts more for high frequency it reacts less okay so the reactance which is the pushback to the current is high at low frequencies and low at high frequencies where this is frequency and this over here is the reactance wait a minute you say you can't use an R for reactance because that's already used for resistance you're absolutely right so we don't know what to put there. We'll just call it reactants. We'll just call it an X. 
sub C because it's for the reactance of the capacitor. Okay? So the capacitance of this is an intrinsic value of the way it was constructed. It depends on the area of the plates, the distance between the plates, and the dielectric that is in between the plates. Those three factors alone determine the capacity of the capacitor, which is constant. Okay. Now the reactance changes with frequency. The reactance X sub C is equal to 1 over 2 pi times F, the frequency, times C, the capacitance. So this is the capacitance which is intrinsic to the device. This is the frequency that you're trying to pass through it. 2 pi shows up in lots of formulas because sine waves and so on are all generated by circles as I've shown in previous videos. And 2 pi is the diameter of a unit circle. Unit circle meaning a radius. It's pi d for the circumference. Okay, so that's x sub c. Now let's look at, at f, uh, at an inductor. And then we're going to do the same thing. We've got an inductor. Okay. And this supposes the change in uh, change in current. If the current changes at a low frequency, it will give some reactance because you're changing current back and forth, but you're doing it slowly, so it's not hindering you too much. If you go to a high frequency and try and change that electric field back and forth, it's going to fight you all the way. The reactance, which is the measure of this, no, we're not supposed to use R, are we? X sub L equals 2 pi F times L. Okay. Notice this is the reciprocal of what the capacitor is like. In this sense, here we have frequency, here we have the reactance, X sub L, and we see that it goes up linear with, linearly with frequency. We note that at high frequencies, the um, uh, coils don't let a lot of current through. There's a lot of reactance. Okay. Well, now, this brings up the question, what is the difference between this and a resistor? A resistor, um, you know, impedes the flow of electrons. Shouldn't there be, if it impedes the flow of electrons, shouldn't there be something for it? Well, the thing is, a resistor, if we look at the frequency, and we'll just call this X sub R for <laughs> just fun. The reactance does not change with frequency. So this is why we assign the resistor. Okay, it's in the same, it's ohms. Okay, and this is just R over here. Now I want to show you something else that's a little bit weird. Okay, we're going to step from the general to the extra. By the way, this is general level material. It's um, it's in the in the general book. I know I just looked there. And uh, in the extra material we get into how all these reactances combine. If you have a diagram, if let's suppose we have an applied voltage AC waveform, okay, and this is time over here, and this is voltage minus voltage, okay, it's an RF waveform. Now let's put a circuit here.
with a resistor this is an ammeter okay and so we're going to put amps over here and the green line is the current waveform through the resistor okay it um, the current through the resistor the current through the resistor is in phase with the applied voltage okay it's in phase with the applied voltage now let's pick another color let's pick red okay and we're going to change this now to an inductor and we're going to measure the current through the inductor this will freak you out current lags. This is called reactive current and it lags behind the applied voltage. Why? Because this is trying to keep current going. Okay, So as that magnetic field collapses in order to be reverse polarized and go the other way, it takes it a while to do that. There's a time constant associated with these reactive types of things. Now let's go for another color here. I'm going to try brown. I don't know if you'll see much of a difference. What we're going to do now is apply a capacitor here. Okay. And we're going to put some RF through this thing. And here's what happens to the the current in a capacitive circuit it actually leads the voltage actually it lags way way behind but it's so much far behind that uh, it shows up on this diagram which is a repeating diagram as being a leading current okay so you've got leading lagging and in phase from a resistor capacitor and an inductor. The amount of lag, and we'll use the red here for the inductor, okay, this right here is the phase angle usually written as a Greek letter phi. Okay, that's the phase angle. It can be in degrees, it can be in Radians, it's usually in amateur radio, it's usually in degrees. Okay, and the phase angle lag depends on the frequency. You've got a given capacitance, but it's the frequency that determines how much of a lag you get out of these things here. So you see that resistors and capacitors are opposite each other in terms of phase. All right. Which means that this is the crowning concept here. And we're going to put down something called Z. And it's going to be the impedance. Okay, and note that this is a vector. Uh, using the applied voltage as our reference, we're going to have an absolute value of Z, which is um, the length of the vector. It's a vector here like this. This is 
theta phase angle. This is the absolute value of z, which is the length, and at an angle of theta. In ham radio, we tend to ignore the phase angle. We just do for weird reasons, and we just look at this right here. Um, for example, something that you know that's measured in impedances is coaxial cable. We've got a characteristic impedance of that. Well, the impedance is the vector sum. This is a vector. It is the resistance in the circuit, which has an angle of zero. It's not any phase difference. Plus the inductive reactance, um, which is X sub L, minus the capacitive reactance, because this is opposite of this. Now these are vectors but we can put an I or a J, J rather, in here, like that. Okay, and you add these. I just wrote an article for QST about how you add these. But the point being, just to summarize, capacitors have capacitance, which is an inherent quality of the capacitor. A capacitor exhibits reactance or pushback to an applied uh, voltage, okay? And that is called the capacitive reactance is a function of the frequency. It's one over two, two pi FC, okay? An inductor has reactance. It gives pushback to the applied voltage, okay? in the opposite phase to capacitive reactance, okay? Whereas capacitive leads inductive um, lags, all right? Now, um, resistors have a reactance, which we measure in ohms, but that is independent of frequency. So we take the value of a resistor as the pushback on the current. It doesn't actually push it back. It, it, it admits it is heat. Capacitors and inductors push back. A resistor just dissipates as heat. We call or we measure the reactance of an inductor in ohms and we measure the reactance of a capacitor in ohms. But remember that the capacitive and inductive reactances are opposite each other and at a, a phase angle away from the applied voltage. Okay, so Ohm's law still applies, but you have to take into account the phase angle. And that's what that article in QST talks all about. So that is probably the most long-winded explanation I have ever given of capacitance and inductance, and I hope that it does not mortally confuse you, but rather sheds light on the subject. So there you go. Um, please take a look at dkassler.com support for ways you can help fund this channel, and please subscribe and click like, and until we next meet, 73.